Well, when I went to grad school uh, at UMass, um, my very first group of, my very first workshop, people in that workshop, I am friends with, I would say, still friends with three quarters of them. They were an amazing group of writers. And my my best reader of all time um, is is was in that group. And um, we actually were collaborating on something and then my novel and his novel got in the way. But um, uh, you might, I don't know if you looked at my little, my pathetic website, uh, it says work in progress. There's one that is called the Forgotten Island. That's my friend, Jed Berry, um, who is amazing novelist and small press. He runs a small press called Nine Pin Press. He's also a game designer. Um, he's just a brilliant young guy. He's amazing. He's, he's probably my best reader. I did my, spend a lot of time on your website, which by the way, I thought was wonderful. <laughs> I, I enjoyed tooling around there. I thought it was very impressive, but you would think that, wouldn't you? We, we've established that that's kind of your default position on, on your stuff to a certain point. But I'm telling you, I've been to terrible author websites. This was not one. This was great. Um, but that work in progress um, uh, page, you've got mm. multiple books listed there, kind of a summary of, of what's to come. So mm. are you extremely comfortable talking about projects even when they're not finished? Sure. And they're, yeah. they're not something that somebody can, can pick up? No, oh, sure. What do you want to know? <laughs> I've, got a, I've got so many things in the queue, buddy. <laughs> Man, I'm just like I'm just biting the biting the bit because I really. It, that's I think one of the hardest things is is um, with a sequel is that my mind keeps wandering to these other projects I want to do. Um, so I have to really you know just focus, but. Um, Probably the next big pro project will, is this is this project that I started um, before the Wonderling called the Echoers, mm -hmm. and um, it's. But then I thought, uh, <laughs> I it, I thought, oh, it's such a it's such a I've never written a novel before, and it's part of it's in graph in graphic novel form, and I have some of the illustrations done. Um, sort of like, um, what's his name? Brian Selznick's, um, uh, you know, uh, invention of Hugo Cabret and, um, Wonderstruck and so on. I, I like that format of having some sections in graphic novel form. Um, so I started that and, and then I just thought I should do some like really short little fluff, you know, like like a like a, a a sample novel like I'll call it the wonderling it'll just be like a tryout little short thing <laughs> <laughs> that worked out well um but the echoers I'm really excited about and I would and um that is uh that is a story set in the arctic where I lived in northern norway um uh, above the 69th parallel and and it is partially it's it's partially based on even though it's fantastic it is it is uh, a fantasy it's also uh, set in um, it's also based on two real life situations real life stories and um, that I've interwoven during um, World War II and it's about this um, Sami girl who comes from a very traditional uh, family um, and, and uh, she ends up um, meeting a Jewish boy who is in hiding. And she basically, it's basically um, a story about her saving this kid, helping him get across to Sweden. But there's also this other stuff because she is, um, she also has, somewhat shamanic powers and um she doesn't know it there's a little theme there <laughs> that i seem to the secret power thing um and uh it's also about um it's also about that place that i spent so much time in and and the sort of myth and folklore um you know material that i soaked up that i weave into the story um and 
originally I thought of it thought of it as a, a trilogy, and and now, um, and I had it, you know, I had synops, I had all like a synopsis of all three books, and now that I'm like struggling with the second book in this thing, I'm like. No sequels ever. <laughs> bad, bad sequels. Evil. And the other I've thing been is- there. It's kind of like being in a in a long marriage. Um, not that I'd know because my marriage is is wonderful. God bless Mrs. Kent. But how I imagine if you went if you were in a marriage that, that started to go bad, uh, and you start to look around like look at all these other people that are kind of interesting to me, but I guess I put a lot of time into this. And then hopefully you get to that phase where you're like, oh nope, I love it again. I just had to do some yeah. work, and the book had to do some work, and now and now we couldn't be happier together. Well, do you have any do you have any advice um, for doing sequels for working on a series? Um, like what works for you? Well, with uh, I've only done um, well uh, in the case of Banneker Bones, which is what I'm working on now. Um, I picked well at the start. It's about, um, I, I used to call it middle grade Batman. Um, Batman's my favorite character in all of, uh, in all of fiction. Um, and it's something that uh, I call it the end then story because I don't have a definitive ending. I'm coming up on the ending of the trilogy that could be an ending forever. But there's also in the back of my mind, I'm leaving room for four five and six. And so this was going to be my James Bond character where there's always going to be another villain that comes along. There's always going to be room for more story. And there's always going to be room for another emotional arc. Because the nice thing about middle grade characters, um, if you're doing an adult uh, person like James Bond, for example, uh, has had the emotional arc a few times now. Of, I'm completely in love. Oh, no, she's dead just before right. the sequel. Or, oh, no, she dies at the beginning right. of the next one. And there comes a certain point of diminishing returns with that. We're mm -hmm. like, hey, at this point, James, you're just not going to find love. I don't believe it anymore. I always, because uh, I'm, I'm old, I think of the Friends TV show. By the time they finally ended that and Ross and Rachel got together for the final time, like, okay, my hands crossed. Like, no, that yeah. is not going to work. Yeah. Give it a they couple need weeks. They need therapy. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas with middle grade characters, because childhood is a constant series of uh, arcs and learning experiences and growing and developing, I think that I'm biased because I'm the middle grade ninja guy, but I think that that does allow itself for sequels and for continued character growth in a way that stories about adults maybe doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think the hardest thing for me has been you know in in book the first book this character my main character is really shy and stutters and he's got um you know social anxiety disorder if you want to you know, give give him a you know a diagnosis and 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 um he you know he really is is sad but content to live in his very very small world until he meets this friend who really expands it and he has to be brave and he has to so he really grows in the first book in the second book he's kind of there so where does he go inside in, you know inside himself that's been the biggest challenge i don't know if you've encountered that um i've been trying to find find what that point of entry is so that he can he can grow like what um I mean, I think, I think, I think I have it. I think he's just gotten kind of comfortable in his life because now he has a better life and he really doesn't want another adventure, but he's forced to, um, but that might not be enough. I don't know. I suppose he'll see, but, um, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the main, uh, that's my main conundrum with, with working on a series is where, how does that your main character grow? Um, so anyway, um, what's I going to say? I can't remember. Ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to toss one other, to... uh, one other tip out there for a sequel, uh, is if you have, uh, ideally, uh, achieve some sort of, um, happy ending almost for your character or happy ending at cost, whatever, wherever you're at. Uh, one of the first things you could do with a sequel is blow up their life in some way. Uh, kill somebody important to them, 
take part of the town away, take mm-hmm. something from them, hurt them badly. Uh, one of my favorite examples is a slight spoiler, I guess, for a book that's very old. In the second book of Stephen King's The Dark Tower, our character is Roland Deschain, an amazing gunslinger. And in chapter one, chapter two, he's passed out on a beach and a mutant crab walks up and bites off his uh, index finger and his uh, two of his fingers <laughs> that he needs to fire his gun. So now he's only got his left hand uh, to continue being a gunslinger. He's lost his right hand. Like, oh, that's how you do a sequel. <laughs> and Roland is, is, is fascinating again. That, actually, that's I just had an idea today that sort of fits that, you know, um, like man, something really bad has to happen to him. He had a really had hard time in book one. We're going to really up the ante in book two. <laughs> so. You've got to do it. you got to keep the character compelling. If you love him, you'll hurt him to make sure he's in the most interesting story he possibly can be. <laughs> This kid, this kid came up to me once. Um, m- m- the m- the response from kids has been fantastic, and I get, I get the sweetest letters from around the world, and I write every one back, even if it takes me a while. Um, but this one kid comes up to me, and he says, he says, I just want you to know, I don't, I didn't like your book, and I said, <laughs> and I said, oh why? And he goes, he said, he said, no one died. And, 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 and I, and I, I hated, I, there was one character I really hated. I said, let me guess. It's the little bird named Trinket. He goes, oh yes, I hated her so much. She's so cheerful. And I said, I said, was there any character you liked? He said, yes, Miss Carbuncle. She was okay because she's a villain. And he said, I won't read your second book unless someone gets killed or, 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 um, and, and, and there's more evil. And I go, well, there's a lot of evil in the second book, but I got to say that, you know, um, I just have a hard time killing a bunch of people off. 